if you haven't guessed, I have a lot of downtime. Sometimes people wonder what I do with my time between episodes. Among other things, I research. I look up cases of strange, unexplainable, and downright horrific stories. That's how I found creepy pastas. That led me to making creepy, the creepy pasta anthology. This is creepy, a podcast dedicated to sharing the most famous, chilling, and disturbing creepy pastas and urban legends in the world. Whether these stories truly happened or are simply fabrications is for you to decide. Gateway of the Mind, Expressionless, Smile, Thought, No End, How Death, Bart, Robert the Dog, Ray, Russian Sleep Experiment, and more. Creepy pastas are the urban legends of the digital age. The name comes from copy, paste, ah. Stories that have been passed around the internet person to person, each making changes, sharing their own take. When that take is horror, the creepy pastas begin to take hold. Not all creepy pastas come from multiple sources. Many have no known point of origin at all. Author credits are listed when known. For more information, including pictures and videos of the stories told on this podcast, or to suggest stories for future episodes, please visit us at CreepyPod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or email us at creepypod at gmail.com. I recorded dozens of these stories and scheduled them to be automatically released weekly. You know, just in case. Please subscribe to Creepy using your favorite podcast app or visit smalltownhorrorpodcast.com slash creepy. Every town has its stories, its secrets. What possible harm could come from sharing them? Hmm? This is Small Town Horror. My name is Ryan Jennings. Small Town Horror is a bi-weekly podcast documenting my return to Creighton, Minnesota, and my continuing search for answers. For more details, please listen to all previous episodes. Immediately after my conversation with my lawyer, I went and got ready to do something stupid. I set the podcast for a future release date so I'd have time to go to Ashbury before anyone knew what I was planning. If it sounds familiar, it should. It was stupid then, too. And considering what happened the last time I tried that, stupid might not even be the right word. Except the problem is, I can't stand not knowing anymore. Even if that means walking in the woods during the night. My options dwindled to nothing. I had to do something. Except... The two black sedans sitting about a block down from the motel and the half dozen DEA agents with their oh-so-subtle DEA emblazoned jackets, well, they all looked at me as soon as I opened the door. That put a stop to things pretty quickly. And I was right back to sitting alone. For a while, I waited to be arrested. 
I had no idea why and that made things all the worse. The image of them looking at me. All of them watching me. It made time hurt. I tried to call Julie. But she didn't pick up. I sat there and tried to look up Alex or Roger on social media. Thinking maybe they would respond to me this time. <clears throat> but it looks like Alex finally blocked me. And Roger... He hasn't even looked at any of my messages. I needed to talk to someone so badly that it almost hurt. But they didn't respond. I know who I am. I know that I'm a mopey bastard. I know that the choices I've made in my time back have been questionable at best. I know that those of you listening to this don't understand why I would do the Sinner's Game again. Or why I would go to Ashbury. Or why I left Sarah alone in the tunnel. I'm not the hero of this story. I spend a day thinking about things. Working myself up to do that stupid thing. Regardless of the sedans outside. When. Like an angel. Julie comes over. How's it going? Fine, why? I've been thinking about you and you haven't been to a group or called all week. Can I come in? Yeah, of course. You worried about me? Yeah, you're my friend. I worry about my friends. I'm fine. I listen to the podcast, Ryan. You don't sound fine. And honestly, you don't sound like the person I talk with on the phone. It's like I'm listening to a stranger whenever you release an episode. You just sound so defeated. Julie, I can't even bring myself to laugh anymore. What's that say about me? What's that saying? Uh, Pablo Neruda, believing laughter is the language of the soul. You read Pablo Neruda? No, but it was in an episode of The Simpsons. <laughs> that, right there. See? That. Why aren't you like that? Whoever I was before coming back to Creighton is long gone. Julie, I'm the emo kid who sits in the back of the class and talks about how unfair and bullshit life is. Then when he gets the chance to step up, fails. That's not who you are. Yeah, it is, Julie. It's okay. I get it. I never should have come back here. I lost my job and I needed something. This? All this was a mistake. You deserve to know what happened to you. I don't think I believe in the idea of deserve anymore. Do you blame me? For what? For what happened to Sarah. For leaving her in the tunnel. Ryan, that doesn't... It's okay. I do too. I should have stayed with her. I left her there. Trapped. But she got out. I abandoned her. It doesn't matter what I thought was right at the moment. I left her. In that moment, I abandoned her. Ryan? What? I'm going to tell you something, and I don't want you to take it the wrong way. Not a great way to start things. Yeah, but... I think you need to stop all of this. I think you need to stop doing this podcast, and I think you need to stop looking for Sarah. Excuse me? It's just... You're holding on to this so tightly. You can't forgive yourself for what was done to you. To you, Ryan. You stay here and you look for answers and you sit alone. I know this is going to sound harsh, but... 
Can you honestly say that there's been anything in the last four months that actually made you feel better about yourself? Yeah. You. Ryan, I know what you're going through hurts. And you think that if you keep looking that you'll find her, but you aren't looking for her, you're looking for forgiveness. It's one and the same. Ryan, Sarah's been gone for almost eight months. No one can find her. Not the police or anyone. And the more you push to find answers, the more it's tearing you apart. I can't stop now, Julie. Why? Because I don't know what I have if I let this go. Sometimes we just need to let go, Ryan. Just think about it, please. I do think about it. I think about it every day. We go out and get some breakfast from Dan's cafe and talk some more. Not about my quitting this or leaving. We just talk. We talk about family and work. And she spends a lot of time trying to make me laugh. And she almost does with that horrible, afraid not... Afraid not. Afraid not joke. It's horrible. Alright, edit note. Remember to go back and edit down the talk with Julie. People don't need to hear all that. Um, make sure to check the background noise from when the heater came on. And let's redo the opening voiceover. The episode's still running short, so... I don't know, let's give William another call. I haven't heard from him in a while, and if he doesn't pick up... I don't know, I can spin that into speculation about him being involved or something. Maybe try and get the lawyer to keep looking into Ashbury somehow. Maybe something will come out of that. I don't know. I need to do something. Anyone listening to this has got to be getting tired of me by now. So, I wouldn't say you could just kiss my ass. We have information about Sarah. Fine. Same deal as before. I get to record this. And if you pull any of that shit you did before... I just want to talk. I'll be there in about an hour. Sounds about to be arrested by the DEA. They're just kicking my door, right? First, Ryan, I wanted to apologize for the last time we spoke. I... well, I was out of line. You get yelled at for being an asshole to a victim? <laughs> yeah. I suppose I deserve that. No, not exactly. Sometimes when you're a cop, you get feelings about people. And one thing you learn on this job is that a lot of time those feelings really are right. And sometimes they aren't. What do you want? What'd you find out about Sarah? Well, and thank you for agreeing to come in again. I wanted to tell you face to face that we finally made headway in the investigation. So you do have a lead in finding Sarah? We think so. 
Do you or don't you? Yes, we think. But there are things that don't make sense that we need to clear up. Like what? Keep in mind, I came in here voluntarily and I know my rights. So I'm pretty much ready to walk out of here the second you get that shit-eating attitude with me again. Fair enough. I wanted to talk about Ashbury. So you did go out there? Yes, we did. Going off the audio posted on your podcast, well, we had to follow up any lead we could in the investigation. There was a strong chance that if you had been kept out there in the room you described the, uh, uh, cellar, I suppose you'd call it, then there would be a chance that Sarah was out there too. But she wasn't there. How'd you know that? But wait, 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 please. I'm sorry, Ryan. I didn't mean it to sound like that. Of course she wasn't there. Otherwise, she'd be here, right? Really, I didn't mean it. It's force a habit. I'm here to lay all my cards on the table, not play games. Just simple ask and answer. So what did you find? Nothing. Nothing? There were a dozen bodies out there. The ground would have been covered in blood. How long did it take you to get out there? We were out there in July, when you first posted that you were going. But even that was a month after the fact, since you posted your episodes on a delay. Are you saying someone took the bodies? I don't know. Again, I wasn't part of this investigation at the time. But, according to those initial reports, there's no evidence to suggest that anyone had been out there in years. But you found Ashbury. We found the building complexes and the mines, but that's it. They were all empty. Even the one building you described as having the cellar with the chains. There was nothing there. Nothing. No animal carcasses, no bodies, no ash. No ash. It literally fell from the sky. Yeah, about that part. Uh, look, I know this is going to sound upsetting, but I have to ask you this question, and I don't see that it was asked previously. What? Do you do drugs, Ryan? No. This isn't me judging or accusing. I know you drink, or drank. I was just curious. You think I got high and made all this up? Honestly, no, I don't. But I think there are details you have confused. Do you know what this is? It's... lab results? Yeah. They're results from tests that were administered when you were first brought into the hospital. We had to get a subpoena for those. Otherwise, I would have spoken to you about this a while ago. Can you uh, tell me what the results say? This is bullshit. No, Ryan. It isn't. It's LSD. I mean, you seriously thought it was raining ash out there? DEA. Yeah, Ryan. The DEA. I've had enough of this. If you want to talk to me, you can call I my. Leave if I were you, Ryan. Why is that? Recognize this. I think I want a lawyer. Is that a yes? Well, maybe you should close the door and take a seat. I think I want a lawyer. You aren't under arrest. Are you saying you want me to stop talking with you so you can have an opportunity to call a lawyer? I think so. That's not enough. We need to be very clear on all this. Now, we can stop talking, but honestly, things are going to move forward pretty quickly. Instead of us talking about what happened. Instead of you helping me to understand what's happening. So, I need you to be clear. Do you want to stop talking with me so you can contact your lawyer? I can explain. No, I don't need a lawyer. I'm innocent. Then, do you recognize this? I don't know. What's it look like to you? It's a shotgun. Does it look familiar? I don't know. Does it look like the shotgun that you purchased on June 11th, 2016? I don't know. You don't know if it looks like this? Yes, I mean... Yes, the shotgun I bought looks like that. But I don't know if it's the same one. You went down in the mine? Well... <laughs> Ryan, you had to realize we were going to talk to you about this at some point. I mean, you admitted to shooting and killing a man on your podcast? You found the man who was chasing us down in the tunnel? The man you shot. That's okay, Ryan. You don't need to answer that. The fact is that we found this gun. This gun that was purchased by you at 
On June 11th, 2016, the gun that has your fingerprints on the stock and trigger, the gun that was discharged at a man who is now dead. He attacked us. Oh, us? Me. He attacked me and the mine. We were trying to get away. I told him to stop. He had a gun. You heard- Here's the problem, Ryan. We didn't find anything down in the mine. I don't- Oh, the gun? Yeah, we found that in the woods. But- We found it dropped right next to the body. What? Yep. The way I figure it, you dropped it right after you shot your friend. What? Why don't you go ahead and stand up now, Ryan? Here. Let me help you. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Now, normally I'm not the kind of guy to say I told you so, but like I said before, most of the time those feelings you have about people are right. Ryan Jennings, you're under arrest for the murder of Roger You have the right to remain silent, unless you have something you just have to say right now. Did you just say something? Are you waiving your rights? Yes. Ryan? <laughs> Hello there. I uh, apologize if I'm a little emotional. I'm a couple glasses of wine in. Um, Ryan has one of these sponsors that send wine to your house. It's, it's pretty awesome. Anyways, it wasn't easy to get access to Ryan's voice recorder from police custody, but Ryan insisted that this audio be posted. When I tried to get Ryan to explain to me what happened, he only said a single sentence. They need to hear it. We ask the listeners of this podcast to please be patient while we work on Ryan's release from jail. He is an innocent man. We will be providing any new information and interviews with Ryan as we receive them via his Patreon page. Thank you for your support. We need to free Ryan Jennings. I just wanted to thank everyone who's already supported the podcast and those who continue to support the podcast while I was gone. I can't do this without you. To help me keep the motel lights on as I look for Sarah, please go to patreon.com slash smalltownhorror. All donors get early access to episodes and are eligible to bonus content and other rewards as my thanks to you for support. Please donate what you can to ensure the podcast and my search can go on. That's patreon.com slash smalltownhorror.